Welcome back for chapter 23. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they played the harlot in Egypt. They played the harlot in their youth. There, their breasts were pressed, and there, their virgin bosom was handled. Their names were Aholah the elder and Aholabah her sister, and they became mine, and they bore sons and daughters. And as for their names, Samaria is Aholah, and Jerusalem is a holabah. All right, pause. Let's talk about this. So here we're presented with two symbolic sisters representing the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. We will see that their example is a powerful description of how Judah followed in the sinful steps of Israel. Ahola, representing Samaria or Israel, means her own tabernacle. And Aholabah, representing Judah and Jerusalem, means my tabernacle is in her. Ahola played the harlot while she was mine, and she lusted after her lovers, after the Assyrians, her neighbors, who were clothed in purple, governors and officials, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. She bestowed her harlotries on them, all of whom were the choicest men of Assyria, and with all whom she lusted after, with all their idols she defiled herself. She did not forsake her harlotries from the time in Egypt, for in her youth men had lain with her, and they handled her virgin bosom and poured out their lust on her. Therefore I gave her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, after whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness, they took her sons and her daughters, but they slew her with the sword. Thus she became a byword among women, and they executed judgments on her. Pause. Israel's relationship with the Assyrians is well documented. Syria expanded into Israel's land during the reign of Jehu in the book of 2 Kings. The black obelisk of the Assyrian king Shalmaneser III, which was a structure similar in shape to the Washington Monument, mentions Jehu, son of Omri, and pictures him bowing down to the Assyrian monarch. Menahem and Hoshea, two later kings of Israel, also paid tribute to Assyria. The prophet Hosea rebuked Israel for her dependence upon Assyria instead of the Lord throughout the book of Hosea. Verse 11. Now her sister Oholabah saw this, yet she was more corrupt in her lust than she, and her harlotries were more than the harlotries of her sister. She lusted after the Assyrians, governors and officials, the, the ones near, magnificently dressed, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men, I saw that she had defiled herself. They both took the same way. So she increased her harlotries, and she saw men portrayed on the wall, images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, girded with belts on their loins, with flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like officers, like the Babylonians in Chaldea, the land of their birth. When she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. The Babylonians came to her to the bed of love and defiled her with their harlotry. And when she had been defiled by them, she became disgusted with them. She uncovered her harlotries and uncovered her nakedness. Then I became disgusted with her, as I had become disgusted with her sister. Yet she multiplied her harlotries, remembering the days of her youth, when she played the harlot in the land of Egypt. She lusted after their paramours, which means lover or adulterer whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus you longed for the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians handled your bosom because of the breasts of your youth. Pause. So the judgments upon Israel witnessed by Judah should have been a warning to them, but instead she became even more depraved. King Ahaz willingly made allegiance between Judah and Assyria. Rather than trust God for deliverance as Isaiah had urged, Ahaz requested Assyria's aid and protection. Then after appealing to Assyria, Jerusalem turned to Babylon. Verse 22. Therefore, O Aholabah, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will arouse your lovers against you, from whom you were alienated, and I will bring them against you from every side, the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekod and Shoah and Koah and all the Assyrians with them, desirable young men, governors and officials, all of them, officers and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. They will come against you with weapons, chariots, and wagons, 
and with a company of peoples. They will set themselves against you on every side with buckler and shield and helmet, and I will commit the judgment to them, and they will judge you according to their customs. I will set my jealousy against you, that they may deal with you in wrath. They will remove your nose and your ears, and your survivors will fall by the sword. They will take your sons and your daughters, and your survivors will be consumed by the fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewels. Thus, I will make your lewdness and your harlotry brought from the land of Egypt to cease from you, so that you will not lift up your eyes to them or remember Egypt any more. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will give you into the hand of those whom you hate, into the hand of those from whom you were alienated. They will deal with you in hatred, take all your property, and leave you naked and bare. And the nakedness of your harlotries will be uncovered, both your lewdness and your harlotries. These things will be done to you because you have played the harlot with the nations, because you have defiled yourself with their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister, therefore I will give her cup into your hand. Thus says the Lord God, you will drink your sister's cup, which is deep and wide. You will be laughed at and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of horror and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria. You will drink it and drain it. Then you will gnaw its fragments and tear your breasts, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, bear now the punishment of your lewdness and your harlotries. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Son of man, will you judge Ahola and Aholabah? Then declare to them their abominations. For they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. Thus they have committed adultery with their idols, and even caused their sons, whom they bore to me, to pass through the fire to them as food. Again, they have done this to me. They have defiled my sanctuary on the same day, and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slaughtered their children for their idols, they entered my sanctuary on the same day to profane it, and lo, thus they did within my house. Furthermore, they have even sent for me, who come from afar, to whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came, for whom you bathed, painted your eyes, and decorated yourselves with ornaments. And you sat on a splendid couch with the table arranged before it on which you had set my incense and my oil. The sound of a carefree multitude was with her, and drunkards were brought from the wilderness with men of the common sort. And they put bracelets on the hands of the women and beautiful crowns on their heads. Pause. After plainly stating the sins of Samaria and Jerusalem in the previous section, Ezekiel returned to the symbol of the harlot to represent their unfaithfulness to God. They happily and carefully prepared themselves for their unfaithfulness to Yahweh. God appointed sacred incense and oil for the service of the temple, and Jerusalem, in her corruption, used these sacred objects as part of their idolatry. Verse 43. Then I said concerning her, who was worn out by adulteries, Will they now commit adultery with her when she is thus? But they went into her as they would go into a harlot. Thus they went into Ahola and Aholabah, the lewd women. But they, righteous men, will judge them with the judgment of adulteresses and with the judgment of women who shed blood, because they are adulteresses, and blood is on their hands. For thus says the Lord God, Bring up a company against them and give them over to terror and plunder. The company will stone them with stones and cut them down with their swords. They will slay their sons and their daughters and burn their houses with fire. Thus I will make lewdness cease from the land, that all women may be admonished and not commit lewdness as you have done. Your lewdness will be requited upon you, and you will bear the penalty of worshiping your idols. Thus you will know that I am the Lord God. Longer chapter today, let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Dear Lord, we'd like to continue with the theme of this chapter today and pray that we would not succumb to the lusts of the flesh and of the world. 1 John chapter 2 tells us that for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Romans chapter 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing 
you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Lord, as you know, this is a daily battle for us that we would lose on our own. We need your help. We need the guidance and promptings of your spirit to keep us from falling into temptation. So we ask this of you today. Please deliver us from temptation and help us to be on the victorious side of Satan's attempts to harm, hurt, and hinder us. Please sustain our renewed minds to keep our thoughts above and not on the foolishness of the flesh. Please keep things like coarse joking, foul language, sexual immorality, greed, envy, desire for material gain, and ease of living away from our souls. Rather, may we pursue what you taught us. Humility, compassion, generosity, patience, kindness, contentment, self-sacrifice, purity, and honesty. Please strengthen us in these areas and grow us in maturity of the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great to be back, you guys. Thank you for being here. Lord willing, I would love to see you tomorrow. Take care.